Today I'm in the uh, White Mountains of California and I'm photographing the Brissacombe Pines, which are the oldest trees in the world. And for this shot I've got my 300 millimeter on and I'm in the vertical orientation. I have the uh, subject a little off center, but it's kind of leaning into the center of the frame. And there's a spot here, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little branch that sticks off this tree. and it just sort of framing the tree in the background too, which is nice. Um, and then also in the background, we have these hills that are coming in from both directions that also kind of meet right in the middle of the frame. So overall, a pretty, uh, a pretty nice composition. And right now I'm just kind of waiting on the clouds to fill the frame perfectly um, before I make my first exposure here. Okay, this is going to be a uh, fourth of a second exposure here on Portra. Pretty happy with how the clouds look right now. I'm just going to check my composition now and uh, probably end up taking a few exposures on the scene just because the clouds are just moving all over the place and I'd like to have a few options to choose from. All right, here's a, another exposure, just kind of a backup. And this is the same, same exposure, fourth of a second on Portra 160. Okay, there it is. There's that nice kind of diffused light here in the foreground. And that's gonna give me a half second exposure. This is on Portra 160. Now this is the exact type of light that I was hoping to capture for this scene. It's a soft and diffused light, yet it has some direction to it. And if we compare it to the first shot I took, which is a much more harsh and directional light, I think that the third shot is much more pleasing to look at. I'm just getting things packed up. Uh, pretty happy with the conditions I got this evening, so I'm gonna Get out of here and go find uh, camp for the night and hopefully uh, find another photograph tomorrow evening.
All right. Well, day two here on this trip for me. And um, initially when I, when I plan a trip, what I like to do is just have like a single photograph in my mind that I want to try to capture. And so for this trip, it was very similar to what I photographed yesterday. It's like a vertical orientation of a brissacombe pine. But initially when I pre-visualized the shot, it was, it was a long exposure. So it had like some motion blur from the clouds in the background. And um, that was just to kind of show passage of time. Because when I, when I think about a brissacombe pine, I just think about how old they are. So that was, that was sort of the goal for this trip. And um, today I'm gonna try to find the, the perfect brissacombe for that photograph. But I also wanna keep uh, my eye out for some like intimate shots of the root systems on these trees because they're pretty gnarly looking. Um, so that's sort of the plan today. And uh, I obviously haven't scouted much. I just kind of got here last night. Um, but uh, I'm going to probably spend a better part of the day hiking around and trying to find um, some subjects to photograph. So, but I'm going to keep packing up camp here and uh, then I'm going to hit the trail. Well, it's about uh, five o'clock now, and I spent a good chunk of the day just hiking around the uh, Patriarch Grove. But uh, I ended up finding more intimate shots than anything. So I think I'm gonna focus my attention on those. And starting off with a shot that I actually found yesterday evening. And um, that's because I know exactly how the light's gonna hit the scene. And it's a pretty small scene, and I initially was gonna stand, like say here, but I was casting a big old shadow into the shot. So now, now that I've seen the light, I know to stand off to the side when I take that shot. So um, I've also got a um, tape measure that, that uh, I'm gonna bring with me because I think I'll end up having to measure out the bellows extension and factor that into the exposure. I am gonna be shooting slide film, so you know, accurate exposure is uh, very important. But I'm just packing things up now and I'm gonna get out there and start uh, working on the composition. So this, uh, this scene here, there's actually quite a bit of depth between the closest and the furthest part. So what I've done is I focused on the nearest and then the furthest, and I met it about a third of the way in, and that's gonna give me the best chance to get everything in sharp focus. There's so many different planes of focus here that movements isn't really gonna help me out. It's just gonna you know, get one plane in focus, but lose another one entirely, so. Um, my standards are perfectly vertical. The only movement I applied was a little bit of lens fall. Um, that was just to help me out with my composition. So um, now that I've got that all focused, what I'm gonna do is take my tape measure here and uh, measure out my bellows. 
So they're about eight, a little over eight, which on a two 10 millimeter is perfect. So I won't have to uh, add any extra light to this exposure. Well, I got this shot set up now and I've been waiting for the past hour. Um, just kind of watching the light go in and out. There are a bunch of big clouds up and right now the sun is behind a cloud, um, but it should, the horizon looks pretty clear, so it should pop out um, from behind the cloud in about 10 minutes here, and then I'll be ready to start uh, photographing. But um, pretty cool subject. I mean, I think it's pretty neat. You know, it's a it's a 4,000 year old tree and looking at the roots. So um, it's definitely not gonna get a lot of likes on Instagram, but I don't really care. <laughs> All right, so this is going to be a fourth of a second on Kodak E100. So the reason I chose to shoot slide film for this shot is I really wanted that high contrast look. I think it works well with this subject, um, but you'll notice in the top left that there's almost no detail in the uh, shadows. And in the next exposure, the light intensity is going to drop by about a stop and a half, and overall the exposure is going to even out a little bit. And so that'll give me more detail in the shadows. Stopping my lens down to f45 and a third. It's going to be a one second exposure. And uh, this will be my last shot for the evening. Morning. It's uh, day three for me on this trip, and this will be my final day here. But I have one more photograph that I want to try to capture, and it's a um, abstract kind of intimate shot. The reason I say abstract is because it's kind of hard to tell what you're looking at. Um, but there's a bunch of different textures and, and reflected light, and I think it'll be a pretty neat um, photograph to, to try to take. Um, it's one of those where I'm not sure if it if it looks good in person and just will kind of fall apart as a, as a picture, but um, there's only one way to find out. So I'm gonna go uh, head out there and start working on that composition. This photograph is all set up and uh, I'm on a 300 millimeter, but my bellows are extended out to about 15 and a half inches. So I'm gonna have to compensate for the uh, bellows extension. And also a depth of field is, is a big issue for this shot. Um, there's just no way I can get everything in focus. So I'm gonna stop my lens down as much as I can and there's definitely gonna be some soft spots, but you know, sometimes that's okay. It will add a little bit of uh, depth and dimension to the photograph. Um, so this particular one, it's an abstract, so there's no real focus point. Um, so it might be all right. 
but to be honest I'm a little unsure about it I considered packing up my camera but um, I want to make an exposure and just uh, see what it looks like on my light table all right this is going to be a uh, one second exposure at f45 and two-thirds on uh, Kodak E100 Well, with that exposure done, I'm going to call that a wrap on my visit to the White Mountains. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you around on the next one. Mm -hmm.